Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. We'd like to take a moment to just apologize about what happened. We were having some technical difficulties, but we're back and we're moving right along. Now, she's an extremely passionate and dynamic food enthusiast who brought her own brand of style and charisma to the food television industry. She's multi-award winning freelance food writer, celebrity TV chef, and food judge with an authentic love for her people and the African continent. Joining us in the loft is Sibam Tongana. Welcome to the loft, Sibam. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, Thanks, so Bonnie. Awesome to have you. Thank you. Now, eight years yes. in the food industry. What came first, television or food? Uh, food came first. And in fact, I have a degree in food and consumer sciences where I majored in food science and nutrition. So food is literally my career of choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a lovely journey. I started off as a junior lecturer. That was my very first job. Okay. Um, moved from there and became a food editor for one of the biggest magazines in the country. And that's where I had my first cooking show, which was called Cooking with Siba. Yes. And you were going to be invited. Because <laughs> I invited And then you moved on to bigger we, things. We, we moved on before I could invite so many people. Oh, and man. it won a it won, it won a SAFTA in its first season, which is amazing. And what happened was, uh, how I got into Food Network is that they, it, it, uh, it also aired um, in the UK, and they saw me there, and, and they, they came down. Yes, they came down for an interview, and the rest is history. Oh my gosh, where did your passion for food begin? It must have started in my kitchen at home. To be honest with you, my mom loves cooking, but she's not. she was never an experimental cook. She cooked mfino, you would know mfino. Yes, I love mfino. Um, pork orko, which is our traditional food. Uh, and of course, she would cook pasta, rice, and other dishes. Yes. But I just love the way in which she, 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 she did her thing. She used quite simple ingredients. And my, my father had a garden for her, just in our backyard. And it, my job as a young girl would be to go into the garden and pick up some vegetables for her, clean it, make sure that they're perfectly done and then I'll see see her slicing them and preparing them so I think there must have been something that captured me from that yes. young age but I must tell you the truth it was so hard for me to tell my parents that I wanted to do take food as a career they said never yeah what was their reaction <laughs> no it was like a simple they were no. like but everybody cooks how can you do that for a living no <laughs> uh, you know and also uh, mama said all our lives we worked so hard to get out of the Just kitchen so you can cook <laughs> to get out of the kitchen <laughs> and you want to go and work in the kitchen. I'm like, Mama, there is a uh, proper career. Well, you've made yes. a splendid success of it. Now, your show is watched in over 128 countries. It's yes. in 60 million US homes, and it's chopping, uh, topping the charts in Poland and Russia. And Russia. How does that make you feel? It's amazing. I was invited to the Taste of Moscow earlier this year, and I had they take things very seriously. I had a uh -huh. Russian bodyguard, like Ooh, with a gun and all. Like, wow. I was like, top notch, which is really lovely, but very yeah. funny to see at the same time. Went to Poland as well have recently been to Abu Dhabi and it's it's just been so amazing I'm enjoying it out of all the places you've traveled to what's been your favorite my favorite has been I've been to Lisbon in Portugal and I remember one of the things that I always try to do is to introduce South African uh, food or Cuisine, dishes yes, or, yes. Yeah. and people don't really know what we eat and this time I had chakalaka amongst many other dishes that I made and I remember there was this one lady who said yes waka waka wow. <laughs> waka waka, waka. Oh, oh. I was like yes ma'am <laughs> it's time for Africa but this is chakalaka oh, wow. <laughs> so I try to educate as much as I can because people really don't know what we eat right, but we yeah. know what Asians eat we know the, what the French eat so it's really time that we show the world what we made of what you made of awesome now apparently there's a viewer in dubai mm -hmm. her husband bought her a brand new car after she started cooking from your recipe book that was last Girl, year i need to start <laughs> cooking your recipes though yay hey it may happen to you too <laughs> exactly <laughs> how did you, how did you feel when you heard so that it was so amazing in fact the response i've had like worldwide has just been so overwhelming so people will write me on social media and this one lady i'm not always able to look at everybody's messages yes. but i so happened to run across this one and she was so thankful said Siba ever since I started using your recipes they're very simple they're very you know and also they make she makes it halal so if I am using bacon she just will change it into what oh. into uh, to suit her religion yes. and she said ever since I started cooking for you my husband bought me a new car so that's I was like, what Girl, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying, coming over yeah, to Dubai you must give me I'm, a ride you know we're supposed to be giving away <laughs> your book but I think I'll keep this one for myself out of all the places that you travel to and cook and and what do what South African dish do people most want to know about or ask you about? Well, the most that they often ask um, is baboti. 
um, and there is a special sausage that they know that is typical South African, but they could never pronounce the word. And guess what? That is uh -huh. burevors. <laughs> it's like burevors. <laughs> they never, they never get it right. But yeah. those are the two main main things that I always ask. That's incredible. But you've also invented some signature first dishes. Yes. What is pap pizza? Pap pizza is a recipe pap I created. Pizza. Yes, it's it's a it's a pizza that is made out of a pap base, um, wow. maize milk pap. And what I wanted really was, um, in fact, I had run out of my of 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 my <laughs> of my pizza base uh -huh. and I was like you know what and I had maize milk I always have maize milk at home we always have we maize always milk. have maize uh -huh. milk and everything can run out but we'll have maize milk exactly so I was like all right let me just whip up something I thought I was gonna serve it with it but I'm like okay fine I wanted to make pizza so let me make this and that's how pizza um, actually started uh, was created and I even had it featured in them in um, in two magazines that I'm working on now but it's just become such a big thing now and Fino Fino fritters. I made uh, mfino, you know what mfino yes. is, maize milk and spinach. It's such a simple dish and I turned it into a wonderful canapé which you top with soy mayo and, and hot smoked salmon. Oh wow, it's I there. would never have thought of that. It was <laughs> absolutely tasty. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so in love with your cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. And today we're giving away three copies of Siva's book, My Table, which will make the perfect gift for this festive season. All you have to do is SMS the keywords books, your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50, T's and C's apply, and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Let's see what Danilo is cooking in the kitchen. Oh, we're about to have so much fun. Good afternoon, South Africa. I hope you're having a fantastic afternoon. As you can see, I've got Hannah Lurie, who we haven't cooked together in such a long time. I know, I'm excited. And today we're making an absolute classic on the show today, the traditional gammon, which is one of my favorite dishes uh, throughout the festive season. So I thought, I found this, and I thought, like, let's make it a cracker. <laughs> okay, here it goes. Yay! Oh, you just threw your gift right over your head? This, Story of my life. This, you can attach your keys because it's a little hot. I don't think that's a very good thing for me to have on, on my keychain. So you can have that. I'll get it. And you can cook for us today on the show as sort of like your gift to Afternoon Express for this festive season. Gammon is such a classic for, this, for, for the holiday season. I mean, it has history in France, I think, with the name itself, meaning hind leg. Or you guys don't need to worry about that. Just taste delicious. <laughs> yeah, we just need to know that most people have it on their Christmas tables. Yeah. So um, I thought I'd like share some of my tips and tricks to, like giving you the perfect gammon this star. Christmas. Yeah. So I think we'll start off with the glaze and um, just so I can start reducing that kind of thing. So I've cool. kind, of, kind of done like an Asian style. So it's a little bit of soy sauce mm. and some nice aromatics here like star anise and cloves and you got to love a little bit of mustard in there. Oh, yummy. Okay, yeah. so mustard isn't very Asian in its style, is it? No, so this it's... Is, this is the Hannah twist. Yes, this is the Hannah twist. Rock the, style. like, festive Christmas mm. twist, I guess. So you got a, a classic cinnamon in there as well. So this is... I kind of like making this for people that aren't really, like, into gammon. This yeah. is the kind of thing that got me to love gammon. It's, like, kind of giving it a different flavor profile. Awesome. Like, something that's not so, like, sweet, like a cranberry yes, exactly. glaze or something. Mm. But um, as delicious as they are. But oh man, but like any glaze that, you, that people make to, it will always go well with the gammon. Gammon is so delicious. I mean, it's already been cured, so it's nice and salty. It's got all of that flavor in it. Yes. And then they smoke it afterwards too. So it's got that nice smoky, rich sort of flavor to it. But I've always wondered, once it's been smoked and salted, you still have to cook it. Yes, so that's the thing. That's the difference between ham and gammon, is that oh. ham is, like, is cooked, and this is still kind of, it's been cured. And, yeah. and smoked, but you still have to cook it. Cook it, it first, okay. So this particular one we've actually already simmered with some like the normal things like bay mm. leaves mm. and peppercorns and onions and carrots and so Yum. on. So it's generally like 30 minutes for every 500 grams. Okay. So this like, kind of ensures that it's succulent and um, has less time in the oven. Yes, I see. So it's kind of perfect for the make ahead kind of thing. Okay, so, so what's this knife doing here? Well, you can get started on scoring for me. So as you can see, we've kind of taken uh, off the... Scoring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as you can see, we've taken off the skin already because you don't want that like yeah. tough leathery layer, but you can use it for like ham stocks and that kind of thing, so don't throw it or away. Or you can make like a nice crackling out of it. You just yes. put it in the oven, salt and pepper, delish. So you're already the pro teaching me a thing or two. Oh, it's so, in, in the Slovenian blood, I promise yes. you crackling. So I think I'll just show you how we can... So now we're going to score it. So it's kind of the thing to get through most of the fat, but not cut all the way down to the skin. Oh, so you're so gentle with this. It's not yes. deep at all. It's so letting, less than a centimeter. Yeah, so you're letting the knife do all of the hard work, essentially. You're not, you don't want to go like into the skin okay. kind of thing. So and, you can carry on doing that if you want to. And the point of doing this? So basically this helps render down the fat and give it that like sticky, delicious, like, you know, anxious, like yummy. Okay. Yeah. This keeps the flavors in nice. Yes, nice and it gets the glaze getting in all the grooves and like it's just 
it's just delicious. Also, it looks pretty darn yeah. amazing <laughs> when it gets to the table. And maybe even if you have a terrible husband who does not know how to cut, like, you know, when you have the, the husband has to carve the meat and he gets all panicky because he doesn't know actually how to do it, this will give him guidelines. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Can't go wrong here. So no, Dad, <laughs> I'm not dissing you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you can either do it one, like, this is quite nice. Oh, do it one way, direction too. I'll yeah, do you can. Okay. Do both directions. Yes, exactly. So, uh, like, so now our. Um, Glaze is reducing a bit, but if you cool. don't really want to make your own glaze, you can go to Woolworths and get, they've got beautiful things like cr cranberry glaze and that kind of thing for a little bit more sweetness. Also, Delish. you can use like English mustard and just spread it all over there. Oh, yummy. Honey. Oh, yes, that's, that's one of my favorite gammons to yeah. do with the delicious mustard. So and then, this obviously needs to go into the oven, right? Yes. At what temperature? Um, I normally do it at about 200 for about 30 minutes or so, just until it gets that like, beautiful like stickiness. Okay. So this sh we've actually already got some here that we've made. Oh, delicious. Earlier. So it needs to reduce does. quite nicely. So yes. It needs to get to that thick. So it gets beautiful and sticky. Okay. So don't be shy. Just get it on all over mm. there. I actually like to do it with, like this. I think the nice little bit about the sweet honey there is the honey will almost glaze itself in the oven. So, well, it is a glaze, but do you know what I mean? Yes. It'll sort of like crystallize and become nice and golden on top. Yes. So okay. this what's Delish. binds everything together. And obviously, like when you put it in the oven, it's important to make sure that you keep basting it on with yes. the glaze, like every 10 minutes or so. Oh, amazing. This is yeah. looking so delicious. It's going to go into the oven. It will show you what a delicious gammon looks like later on on Afternoon Express. You can find this recipe on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. The recipe and the shopping list, in fact, will be there for you. And it's one of those classic dishes you have to make over the festive season. And it's one that you can get everyone involved with. It makes you look really intelligent. It makes you look like a delicious chef, uh, even if you haven't made one of these before, which is absolutely awesome. And they're also awesome. really not a lot of hard work, yes. which is great. Exactly. Plus free. Hannah, you're a star. Awesome. Later on, we'll be making a delicious a lemon, what's it called? Lemon posset. A That's lemon actually posset. Siba's yeah, Siba's going to be making so that one for us, which I'm very excited Siba, for. Yeah. So, South Africa, later on, early on today, I tried a delicious, uh, it was a mushroom infused truffle burger. And I've always wondered where you get truffle from. So, what is that exactly is truffle hunting? Well, traditionally, pigs were used to sniff them out in the forests of France. But did uh, you know that the dogs can also be trained to become truffle hunters? We followed a few trainers and truffle hunting poachers uh, on a hunt to find out more. From the rich South African soil comes a myriad of fresh produce. A few enterprising farmers, with the help of wood food truffles, are now aiming to add one of the culinary world's most sought-after gems to our homegrown goods. Truffles are known as an underground mushroom that grows on the roots of a variety of trees, but oak trees, helix or English oak, are usually the ones that we find it growing on. The flavor and the pheromone that's in the truffles is the same around the world wherever you grow them. And people that have tasted truffles, they always want them again. Truffles are very expensive. At one euro a gram, you have a 50 gram truffle, and all of it is used, skin and all, uh, that's 50 euro. Multiply it for rands by 14 and a half, it's silly money. These underground mushrooms are worth around 22,000 rand per kilogram, and the costs are even higher when imported. While we do have an indigenous truffle, there's a specific variety sought after by chefs. There are natural truffles, or a relative of the truffle, which is called Naba, which is the Kalahari truffle, which, is, which grows naturally in South Africa and was eaten by the Koye, and a lot of people are still harvesting it and using it. But the European Perigord truffle is imported, inoculated onto oak trees and planted out into the right climatic conditions so we can actually grow truffles now in orchards. We've got lots of areas in South Africa that are very, very suitable for truffles and we're busy building them. Along with developing truffle orchards, it was also necessary to develop a truffle hunting animal. Traditionally, pigs are used to hunt truffles in Europe. However, truffle dogs are also used to find and help retrieve these little gems. We looked at how truffles are found in Italy. They've got special dog breeds that they use for that. They were a long time ago hunting dogs, it's a lagot, um, but they're expensive to import and we felt that wasn't the way to go. We needed a breed that we can control here. We looked at long-legged Jack Russell and Beagle for the nose, the Jack Russell for stamina and cheekiness, and they've got absolutely everything. We bred 
the first batch of dogs and uh, my dog trainer and, and good friend Trevor Norris and his wife are looking after them and have very successfully made the dogs search for truffles in various orchards for us already. The first pair of these unique trufflers, as they're called, are named Bonnie and Clyde and it took a year of training to teach them to sniff out truffles. A good truffle dog, we start with a baby dog that is a couple of weeks old and we check which is it playful has it got a nose show that some flavor whether it's meat or whatever do they follow it if you show it around that dog is a potential truffle dog the crux of the matter is in the end whether it'll take the training so a truffle dog is only ready in about one and a half years and the prime truffle dogs are six and seven year old and it's fantastic to watch a dog work it's really beautiful. It shows where the truffle is with its paw. It sits down, it gets a little tidbit as a thank you, and then you go in and take the truffle out yourself. Look here, Bonnie, funny. Look at this. You are so clever, my dog. You won't believe what I've got for hey, you. Hey, look at that. You won't oh, believe it. Fantastic. Look hey, that. look at that. Morning. That's amazing. Just that. Smell that. Brilliant. Smell that. It's wonderful. Now that, amazing. That is real perigord truffles. Tuba melanosporum. That's what we've worked this e-field for. And the dog found what we're looking for. Amazing smell, amazing smell. That's that what the dog finds say. <laughs> so wonderful. The first truffles. Well, well done, done Bonnie. Hey. Oh, man, yeah. clever girl. What a clever girl. Hey. Oh, yeah. When you found that puppy that you want to train now uh, to be a, become a truffle dog and being suddenly very, very valuable, we like to use a ball, a tennis ball even, you put a sock into it, you put some of that oil into it, you know, a rag, put the oil into it, and you hide that. First of all, you play with it, you throw it for the dog, it becomes a game, it brings that truffle flavor back to you again and again, and eventually you bury it, and the dog must find it and let you know where it is. Then you train the dog not to hurt that or bite that truffle. It must show you where it is, sit back, get a tidbit, and you say thank you, I'm taking the truffle out now. It's very important to keep your truffle dog in top form. An unhealthy dog or an unwell dog is not a good truffle dog. It doesn't like to work in the orchard. So we get the vet to prescribe collars that he finds suitable for that dog, or a pour on liquid to stop the dog from having fleas, ticks, all these things. And it's also not nice to travel with a dog in the car that's full of that stuff. For these hard-working animals making a name for themselves, protection is important, and that's why their owners rely on Bob Martin. Well, a dog that can make me 40,000 Rand a kilo is a dog I want to own. Today, we're giving away another hamper to the value of 500 Rand, courtesy of Bob Martin. All you have to do is SMS the keywords Bob Martin, your name and city, to 33728 to stand a chance to win. Now, remember, those SMSs are uh, charged at 1 Rand 50. The T's and C's do apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. So make sure you guys enter now. Now, after the break, we take a look at some luxurious skincare products and we get some advice on how to to manage eczema in babies. Don't go anywhere. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now in a quest for ageless beauty and infinite luxury, La Prairie from Switzerland goes beyond ordinary skincare to intercept aging at its source. Since debuting the first cellular eye cream in 1978, their commitment to exceptional skincare treatment has made them the choice of the world's most discerning woman. Joining us in the loft is La Prairie International Training Manager, Anna Roque, to share more. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Jenny. what an amazing brand that you get to work for. Is that why you're 57 and you took 25? <laughs> Absolutely, but a woman never tells her age. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. What really does make La Prairie so special and so unique? Oh, my word, where to start? But uh, basically, with La Prairie, innovation, inspiration, and magic is the DNA of this brand. And 
They pride themselves in being known as the pioneers and leaders in cellular anti-aging therapy. Um, we are known for using the most rarest of all ingredients like platinum and gold, all for a very specific benefit, which is to obviously prevent and delay and control aging. And like yeah. you correctly said, to intervene and intercept with that process. Now, I'm a La Prairie girl. I'm obsessed with everything in this collection. But I want to know, is anti-aging possible? Like, can we really stop aging? I wish That's we could. <laughs> <laughs> I think Please say yes. Us. <laughs> <laughs> I think absolutely all of us. But the sad news is that aging is inevitable. But uh, La Prairie scientists do believe that visible and physical signs of aging can be slowed down through scientific means. Mm. And that is why our scientists spend no expense when it comes to research and technology to give our clients the absolute best of the best. Yeah. We've got the world's most luxurious formulas that actually deliver from the first application onto the skin. You will notice and feel that difference almost immediately. Yeah. Our philosophy really is to keep women both timely and timelessly by yeah. preserving their youthful skin. I mean, if I have to think of the most luxurious things in the world, I mean, I think La Prairie in Switzerland would definitely be one of them. <laughs> Just La Prairie in itself. So now we have our fabulous, we have yes. Marie and we have Mishka, our gorgeous model, and they're going to be doing a little demo on how to use these amazing anti-aging products. Absolutely, because it's very important that to look after your skin, you follow with a nice home care re re uh, regime yeah. combined with your regular facials and visits to the spa as well for more intense treatment. Okay, so then you do the anti-aging facial. Where can one get one and what does it mean to have an anti-aging facial? Well, our anti-aging facials are done with uh, the La Prairie's um, product, of course, and we, con we contain a secret ingredient called our exclusive cellular complex, which yeah. is actually the lifeline of the brand that helps to preserve our youthful appearance, working directly what with is the that cells. Though? The exclusive cellular complex is a complex that actually helps to re-energize and revive the cells responsible for aging in the skin. So when you go wow. for this treatment, you're getting a super dose of this exclusive cellular complex directly on the skin, but by combining it with your home care regime, you're going to get far better results yeah. by preserving this. I'm a results-driven person. I mean, how instant is it? Is it, you know, just applying it and then seeing immediate beauty in youth? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes and no. We do have some products where you do see a difference almost instantly. Uh, for example, our new anti-aging rapid booster where we guarantee results within two weeks, visible reduction in fine lines and wrinkles thanks to technology. And you will definitely notice a difference in terms of the texture of the skin from the very first application thanks to the cellular-based complex that we use. Amazing. Marie, you're doing well over there. <laughs> what are you using on Mishka? So I use first the eye serum. Mm -hmm. So you apply it from the outside to the inside on the bone areas. Um, and that helps with drainage. So it's quite nice for puffiness and dark circles. Oh, um, I'm putting on the crystalline serum. It's got caviar in it. So it helps with the anti-aging. It's phenomenal. I use, that's the Caviar Luxe, little, I use the eye cream on that and I actually have to tell you that I'm addicted to this stuff. <laughs> but I mean, how much do you have to use? Is, is the secret in being consistent? Um, it is definitely being consistent and with La Prairie, because the formulas are so rich and highly concentrated, you don't need a lot. A little goes mm. a long way and the skin can only absorb so much. So you yeah. really don't need a lot of product. Okay, just quickly for our viewers, where can they do this anti-aging facial? Excellent. We've got uh, seven spas all over the country. Yeah. We've got the Life Day Spa Group. We've got Solstice Day Spa Group, Renaissance, and Octavia's. They oh, all amazing. Offer the that makes a really nice gift as well to give somebody a day at the spa. Uh, the hint, hint. That's what I want. <laughs> now, moving from skincare for adults to skincare for babies. As a parent, watching your child suffer from eczema makes you wish there was something you could do to take the discomfort away. The consistent, agonizing scratching that comes with having eczema causes them great discomfort. But fear not, because there are products available, such as Dermalex, which reduces the irritation and redness that comes with having eczema. In today's Getting Under the Skin series, we catch up with Dr. Naidu for advice on how to treat child and baby eczema. Getting Under the Skin, proudly brought to you by Dermalex. When it comes to eczema, a lot of patients ask me whether females or males get eczema more. Now, when it comes to the research, it shows that females are very slightly more affected by eczema than males. Something very interesting that's been revealed recently through research is 
if you've got a family member, well, specifically a parent of the same sex, the same gender, who has eczema, you are two to three times more likely. And I'm gonna give you an example. So if your dad has eczema, you as a male are two to three times more likely than your sister to have eczema. And if your mom has eczema, your sister is two to three times more likely to have eczema than you. Eczema is something that commonly occurs in childhood and atopic eczema is something that usually presents in childhood and then continues throughout adult, into adulthood often. Now, with babies having such sensitive skin, you can't just put anything on their skin. And often we treat eczema in adults with cortisone creams, corticosteroids. And this is effective, however, there's long-term side effects to cortisone especially in a growing child. Cortisone and long-term use of cortisone on the skin can cause thinning of the skin, and then it can also, over long-term use, have systemic absorption and cause defects in the baby's growth. So, I'm not saying don't use cortisone, just be careful. Dermalex eczema for babies and children is a very, very nice product. It's cortisone-free, so it's very safe in the long term, and it's very good to use in mild to moderate eczema. It reduces the incidence of flare-ups, reduces redness and swelling, and it reduces the itch by replacing the ceramide barrier of the skin. It's got skin-identical ceramide complexes which replace the barrier of ceramide on the skin, helping you to keep moisture in the body and to protect you from ex external sources. It's very safe in the long term, which makes it a really awesome product. Thank you so much to Dr. Naidu for your insightful tips on treating eczema in young children. Now, today we're giving away six months supply of Dermalex eczema for babies and children. So for a chance to win, simply reply to our Facebook and Twitter post using the hashtag Dermalex SA and where we want to know how eczema has affected your child's life. We really do want to know. After the break, our celebrity chef Siba um, Muntanga makes a t takes us and makes us a special sweet treat and we take a look at fresh young fashion label called Triangles. Groundbreaking treatment for eczema in children and babies. Great to have you back with us on Afternoon Express on SABC3. I'm in the kitchen with the gorgeous and gifted <laughs> Siba Mtonga. Now, Siba, you're going to be making us a lemon posset. Yes. Is that it? Perfect What's a posset? It's a very easy, easy dessert. Uh -huh. um, I chose it because, you can, as you can see, I'm Preggies, almost yes, you, <laughs> the baby girl. So it's oh, one of, congratulations. Thank you so much. It's one of my go-to recipes when I just want something very simple. Very quick. Yeah, yeah very, it's, it's quick, but you have to have time to set it in the in the fridge. Okay. Yes, and okay. it uses very minimal ingredients. Okay, so awesome. So it's four ingredients. It's cream, so we can have a bit of indulgence yeah, because it's Christmas. I love anything with cream. <laughs> cream, so I have cream, mm -hmm. and with that I have some sugar. Okay. So you stir that up until the sugar has entirely dissolved. And then once it dissolves, you bring it to the boil and then you, you lower down the heat. We simmer it for about five minutes. Okay. And once it starts simmering, it will start making this froth. And you just remove that. Oh, wow. Yes. So can I see that froth? Can you see? Yeah. Just slightly remove it. And then using some water on the side. To clean your... Yes, your, to clean yeah. the spoon. Otherwise, you just bring it back okay. into the pan. So you just carry on with that. Mm -hmm. And this must um, kind of cool down. And the next step... So it's two things that we've done so far. Okay. So it's the cream. And the sugar. And the sugar. The sugar's now dissolved. And it's cooled down. Okay. Awesome. All right. And it's going to cool down even further. So in this, we have some lemon, some lemon okay. fresh lemon, and in it goes. You just want the juice of the lemon. That's all you need. Okay. So one, Just two. one lemon? In, in fact, you can do two to four okay. lemons. Depends okay. on how much um, citrus you like in your desserts. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So the this full is the recipe and one. the shopping list is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Yes. So this is the last one. Okay. So let's do that. I love me some lemon. So far, it's got all my favorite ingredients, so it's, it's looking good. Do you it's ever cook, good. by the way? Oh, all the time. <laughs> do I look like I don't cook? No. A lot of people say I look like I don't cook. No, you don't look like you don't cook. All right. So we just stir this in. 
to make mm -hmm. sure all every ingredient is nicely immersed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cool this down. So we pour it in into short glasses, preferably, because this is going, you're gonna give this some time to set. To set. Yes. And it, it can be eaten out of the glass. Yes, it, no, okay. need, no need to unmold this. Okay. All right, so you can have more glasses if you like. Okay. So this goes into the fridge overnight if you, if you have time. If not, four hours is usually enough. Okay. Now, so this is literally done. So we're done with the dessert. Is, that's it, done. So that's garnishing. Okay, so awesome. the next step awesome. is we're making a raspberry coulis. Okay. And with the coulis, it's just some berries. And with the berries, you need some icing sugar just to give it a bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. You could add some vanilla if you like. For instance, I've got this vanilla, which is vanilla extract, never essence. Mm. Never essence never extract. Essence, just okay. extract. Okay. So, hmm. using... Where is oh, the Yeah. So we just pulse it. So simple. Uh -huh. And then using a spoon, now this is the trick with this, is you must kind of mix it in together, otherwise it will be all snowy in here. Oh. So mix in okay. the icing sugar. And as fast as you can. As see. fast as you can, okay. yes. All right. And then just carry on. Oopsie, get the button. <laughs> Pony, darling, you can make this. I can. <laughs> Anyone I can, can make this. I can. <laughs> All right, I'm just going I'm to drop this I'm usually afraid of desserts. So really? I, I, yeah, I prefer to buy my desserts ready-made, but like this loft <laughs> kitchen has really challenged me to make my own dessert. That is great. So literally, this is exactly the same. This has had time to set. And what I'm going to do now is to put my berry coolie oh, wow. right on top. Yummy. It looks amazing. It does. I but love those seriously, colors. Seriously, Christmas people, let's just yes. make it nice and simple, but it's it tastes perfect amazing. It's a festive dessert, hey? It is. I'm going to be making that this Christmas. <laughs> and then you can have some berries, whatever berries you like, really. It's fine I'll even if some. I'll tweet, pick it, and tag you in it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And you can have raspberries, because we use raspberries as the main one, as the, as the coolie. Oh, wow, that's a good Mint, that's if you like. Uh -huh. And and is voila. that it done? That's it. Awesome. Wow. See, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Let's go to the cards with Danilo and our next guest, Talking Men's Fashion. Yes, indeed. That stuff looks so delicious, guys. Thank you so much for making that. It's absolutely amazing. Now, Triangles is a fresh, young brand that's not only limited to clothing production, but also it uses different design mediums to express its creative ideas. Having collected a range of African fabrics and with the passion to produce fresh, modern designs for people of all ages, they're inspired by evolution of trends and the thirst consumers have for new ideas. Joining us in the loft is designer Lungiswa Joe. Welcome to the loft. Thank you so much. First of all, I dig the name, the way the name spelled, the triangles yeah. business. I automatically, automatically tried to do triangles and I was like, no, that's, that's, that's not what it is, triangles. How did the name come about? The name came about because of it's trying. It's trying all different angles yeah. until you get it right. And we try angles, it's, it's different, it's, it's a point, it's one singular point that's mm. an individual. But then they come and they unite and make a form, yeah. which is we are individuals, but we interconnect it. Yeah. yeah. So guys, fashion is difficult to break into. I mean, like as a guy, especially working in the media industry, it's collars, 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 shirts, 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 pants, pants, pants. You've taken something very different and made it so unique, so African and so colorful. Tell us about the inspiration behind some of these designs. The inspiration behind the designs are people, are people on the street. The fact that people are always changing their minds. They're mm. always looking for something new. Mm. If it works today, don't think it will work tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so don't buy something that's too expensive. It's just not going to keep it on for very yeah. long. And is, is it angled towards the gents, towards the ladies? Can anybody wear your clothing? The clothing are very much unisex, like the dress that Penny is wearing. Okay. Uh, there's so many different ways go. that she could wear the dress, and guys could also wear it as a top. Totally. And then with jeans underneath. How do you do the cuts though? Because if you think about it, a girl's got a very different cut of a body shape to a gent. Like, yeah. how do you make sure that that works for both? Okay, what I do with the cuts, I, I kind of look at guys and how they want things to sit on them, and then for girls. But then the main thing I do is make them loose. Yeah. And that way it will work for a girl and, and a boy. Totally. Yeah. Well, let's talk to some of the other designs that you've got here, because you've used some really cool prints. You said I see you got you, you took some of the prints that you found <laughs> uh, from all over the country. I think they're really cool prints. Yeah, thank you. Um, tell us about some of them. Okay, some of the prints I've taken from other parts of Africa and then I've taken Shwe Shwe. And the main aim was to kind of introduce 
our African fabrics in a modern way, that you could wear them, like ready to wear clothes. No. It doesn't have to be worn on traditional weddings. You can mm -hmm. actually wear it to work. You can wear it in the street. You can wear it to, at the party. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And how do we go about purchasing this stuff? Because I mean, you said you're not, ex not only um, sort of going for the sort of street style thing. I think like, yeah. a lot of people are really excited by that because it's easy to wear. Really? It's, it's different, it's dynamic. Where can we get your clothing? Uh, you can check us on Facebook and then you could also give me a call. Right okay. now, we we actually communicating through Facebook, our Facebook page. That's so cool. Yeah. So you order and then it gets made and for you immediately gets made for and you comes out. Oh, my and word. then we do deliver. Yes. Yeah. And why street style for you particularly? I think street style is the future. Uh -huh. And I think street style is starting to make its way in the offices. It's starting to make its way in places of praise. Mm. So it is what's happening right now. So that's mm. why we decided street style. It's current and fresh and yes, exciting. Fresh. How long have you guys been around? Because I'm sure there's lots of, you, you said <laughs> the trends change all the time. So all the yeah. designs must keep going. Where do you get this inspiration from? And where to okay. from here? What happens is I do a lot of markets, I do a lot of parties, mm. and what I do is observe. I observe what people are wearing. Yeah, that's stalker, sits <laughs> like, mm -hmm, like what that's wearing, I like that, no, don't like those shoes, like that. Yes, and how they combine this clothing together, uh -huh. and then how it makes part of their own personality, and okay. how they're able to tell stories through their clothing. Oh, so amazing. that's what I do. It looks fantastic, I'm sure it must feel fantastic. It looks light and fresh, and the fabrics look really, really cool too. Thank you. I'm glad you've taken a uniquely South African twist to Jen's clothing. Maybe I should try some of the stuff out. Why don't we write you on Afternoon Express? Over to you, Jeannie. Thanks, Danilo. Now, from fine fragrances for him and her to delicious sweet treats at and uh, sweets and treats at clicks, this festive season, looking great and feeling good, has never been this affordable. But when it comes to wrapping those special gifts, not everyone knows how. Lucky for you, fashion and decor editor Karen Smith from Ideas Magazine has some Christmas wrapping tips and a few tricks just for you. You've diligently done your Christmas shopping and found everything you need for the ones you love. Now, the fun part is making your gifts look festive and exciting. With a bit of imagination and flair, you can get creative with your gift wrapping to add your personal touch and overcome tricky wrapping obstacles like tying the perfect bow. Today I'm going to show you how to tie the perfect bow to finish off your gift. It is a season for giving and gift wrapping anyway. So we're going to take our ribbon and we're going to place it down. What we do then is we take our gift, which we've wrapped really lovely in gold paper already, and we place that sort of roughly in the middle of your length of ribbon. Then what we do is we tie a basic knot like that. We turn it around to make sure that the word is showing upwards towards us. But once you've threaded it through the loop, you pull it tight, and there you go. A beautifully wrapped gift for the favorite person in your life. Okay, when it comes to awkwardly shaped gifts, think out of the box. What we need to wrap our awkwardly shaped gift is a sock and tissue paper. And also what's nice is when you get all your little gifts out of your stocking, you've got something to unwrap as well. So we're just gonna fold it over, roll it. You don't even have to use sellotape for this. Make sure that your gold shiny side is showing up and the matte side at the bottom. It's very important because when you pull it up, you don't want the reverse to be showing and you give the top one a twist so you can see the gold on either side. And then you have a nice deal colored tissue paper, I wanna say flower, which you can then stick in your stocking. Put our gift in and get our little tissue paper flowers and we just stick that in nicely. Now you can hang it on your tree or you can hang it at your fireplace or wherever you want to display it. Chocolates make the best gift for anyone. Instead of wrapping it normally, why not DIY your own gift bag? So we need half a meter piece of paper, which we folded in the middle, just as a guideline. What you do next is you fold flaps over on the other side. Use your middle fold line as your guiding line and fold it over so that it overlaps in the middle. And you do exactly the same on the other side. Take a piece of cardboard and you stick a little piece of double-sided tape on the back, stick that down about two centimeters from the top, put more double-sided tape at the top of your bag and fold that over. This is to secure your bag when you're gonna put handles in. Don't want it to break. The next step is to fold your flaps over again. Make sure that the cardboard is now folded. And then you put a little bit of double-sided tape under one flap to secure your bag. So now you have a bag and then you take your chocolates and put that there. Because now, obviously, your chocolates are going to go in your bag. So you want to make sure that the base is big enough. And then you just add about two centimeters to that. Cut that off. Fold it flat. 
So if you've got a bit of a triangle, fold your one flap in so you've got a nice middle line in the middle there now and you fold it over so that it overlaps that middle line. And then you stick a little bit of double-sided tape on there. Here you go, there you have your bag. So now we punch a hole at the top, sort of roughly in the middle of the bag, punch that and we take a bit of ribbon to make our handles with. And then once you've done that and decorated it, you have this lovely little bag filled with goodies, perfect to stick your chocolates into. With a little paper, tape and ribbon, you can make your gift a stylish display before it's unwrapped and enjoyed. Whatever your Christmas desire, Clix has your wish list covered. All of the decorations and paper that Karen used can be bought in one of the 500 stores nationwide, or na nationwide while you shop, making it all stress-free for you this festive season. Plus, you can uh, make this festive season even more rewarding by swiping your club card every time you shop to earn points on your festive purchases. But that's not all. Clix is giving you the chance to win one of two Christmas Christmas hampers, including delicious chocolates, Izumiyaki fragrances, and a smart life by Cambric Yogurt Maker to the value of 1,500 Rand. All you have to do is SMS the keyword, clicks, your name and city to 33728, and you could be one of our lucky winners. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50 each, T's and C's apply. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za to find them. And uh, after the break, we finish off that perfect Christmas gammon. Stay right there. Feel good, pay less. Give kids the gift of hearing this Christmas. Are you with us? Welcome back. Now make sure you tune in for Top Billing this evening at 7.30 on SABC3. Chris spends a day with Kaiser Chiefs midfield superstar George Levis, being the only player to feature in every Chiefs game so far this season. George shares his secrets to success. Then Roxy jets off to London to interview multi-platinum Irish singer Enya about her new first new album in seven years, Dark Sky Island. And I took a trip to the Woolworths Christmas Market to experience the hot international food trends in an inspiring creative way so if you're looking for some last-minute festive food ideas then make sure you catch top billing this evening over to you Danilo <laughs> it's almost as simple as watching afternoon Express too because we've got some delicious Christmas ideas for you in the kitchen today and today the focus is on that gammon you'll notice that all your family gatherings everyone likes to make one and I'm so glad that we have Hannah joining us in the loft today because this looks absolutely amazing so what has happened, Joe? We've done the glaze, went into the oven for how long? Yes, so it went into the oven for about 30 minutes or mm. so, because oh, like I said, good. we already simmered it earlier, so we don't really need it to cook. It's just to give this beautiful, you know, mm. delicious caramelized skin. It's Asian-y, mustardy, yummishness. Yes. Love it. I'm glad we're on the same page. Okay. So yeah, if you don't mind to maybe do the honors and give it a carve. <gasps> Nobody then. watch, I can't carve. It's I don't okay. know how. It'll and always taste good. Good. And I created those little <laughs> lines, and I can just follow my own lines. Yes, you can't really go wrong. Just kind yeah. of like think about, don't go all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. Must have go Static. all the way through. Okay, go cool. Go all the way through, yeah. What is next to us over here? So basically, these are what I love to eat with um, my gammon on Christmas. So I love these little new potatoes, because then we can just put them in the um, same mm -hmm. tray as your roasting pan as you had with the gammon. Yeah. So they like collect, as you can see, they've collected all those delicious like flavors from the glaze and so on. And then oh, yum. love me some fresh peas, nice little crunch. And then I I like to poach um, some stone fruit because it is summer and it's in season. Oh so um, it's quite nice, like the sweetness offsetting the Asian saltiness. So, so how, how would you serve this thing? Just sort of on the side as you would, like it's just sort of in side dishes. So you take a little slice of your gammon, you'd add a bit of peas to that, and then. Yes. It's definitely about like taking, the, I mean this cut is amazing, it's on the bone, you want to take it to the table for the wow factor. Okay. So it's definitely about sharing and that's what the, yeah. like, this time of the year is about. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask a silly question now, you said to me not cut all the way through, now I don't know what to do, I've cut in and now what? Well it's good, it's just going to have a guideline and then people can kind of just take cut, from cut what they Cut it along like want. this? Cut from the bone? No? <laughs> no. Hannah's so nervous, just take over please. I'm just going to take over I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> to be that guy. So basically you mustn't actually be, well that's I'm actually the key, don't, don't be afraid. Just like kind of, okay. I'll go from all I'm the always scared of missing out on some of the meat. Like I'm always scared that I don't cut it deep enough or you cut it at the wrong angle and you miss out on half that meat. Well, well the, there you go. The, You're doing I, well. I think at this stage, people would have had enough to, enough champagne not to care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come to your How Christmas you're... parties, that's I for know, sure. Right? <laughs> now they know there's champers. Yeah, exactly. You can't really go wrong. Okay. It's not really 
I mean, you've got all the beauty in the whole yeah. cat as it is, so it's oh, about the dish, flavor at the end of the day. This dish looks <laughs> amazing. We've had so much fun on the show today in this kitchen. I love being in the Afternoon Express kitchen. If you guys want to find this recipe and make a delicious gammon for your perfect, perfect weekend or, or your Christmas and your festive season dinners, all you've got to do is go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. You can find the recipe and the shopping list available for you there. And the best part about this recipe is that these gammons come ready prepared for you. And all they come in is like a little wrapping. All you have to do is unwrap it. It's smoked, it's cured already. Yes. Just do the glaze and put it in the oven. Well, simmer it and then do the glaze. Okay, true. Yes. I'm going to carry the heavy <laughs> stuff. You can carry the small stuff. You said it's all about sharing. Let's it's, go share with everyone else. Let's do it. Yum, yum. Right. Incoming. It's all about that gammon indeed. Look at that gammon. Amazing. Yeah, it's almost wow. like wow. game on, gammon, game on. <laughs> Come okay, have a seat. Okay. This looks so juicy. It does. Yeah. I would say it definitely mm. tastes as good as it looks. Yeah, and the whole week we've been doing things that you can do with leftover gammons. Now, uh, leftover gammons. <laughs> I can't even speak today. <laughs> now, remember, if you are still doing your Christmas shopping, Clicks has your wish list covered. Visit a store for great offers, including their mix and match three for two festive season promotion which lasts until the 24th of December 2015 all while promotional stocks last I'm hitting them so the lucky yeah. <laughs> on the 24th I'll How many be days there left, guys it's now like, like eight I think eight days eight left days until Christmas, Christmas. <gasps> yeah and I bought nothing yeah <laughs> ladies yeah. you're absolute legends thank you so much for joining us in the yeah. love today I'm so inspired looking forward to seeing all your shows <laughs> yes nice to cook with you but yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the same South Africa <laughs> have a great <laughs> evening good night happy eating thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yum. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, lifelong friends and actors Maurice Page and Chris Du Davids join us in the loft and members of the Springbok Nude Girls treat us to an exclusive performance. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.